Hi. Hi, Charlie. It's Naomi from the Oxford Vaccine Group. Um, so thank With you coronavirus today. cases hopefully in retreat, researchers working inside the NHS now have more time to learn as much as they can about the virus. The study will provide information about how antibodies levels to coronavirus change over time. The Oxford Vaccine Group, part of the University of Oxford, are on a home visit as part of a coronavirus study. Those that test positive for COVID antibodies will have been infected by the virus at some stage, though they may not have had any symptoms. Hello, hi. You've got a sharp scratch, okay? Researchers hope to find out what proportion of children in England have antibodies so anything else and how that changes over time, so they get a sense of how many children are getting infected. Now we're on 15. You're all done. A little bit concerned to start with. 11-year-old Charlie and his dad Chris are among the 750 families taking part in the trial. Hopefully, if more people doing what, what Charlie was doing, it'll help get us all back to some normal life and get young people like themselves back at school. It makes you feel good because you're doing right and you're trying helping save lives. The results of Charlie's test will be processed in this laboratory in Oxford. The research has been funded by the National Institute for Health Research, which is carrying out over 50 studies into coronavirus. So we have thousands of research nurses across all hospitals across the country. And, and we, what it means is we can mobilise those staff um, and their time is ring-fenced to do research. And will this kind of this immunity, these kind of antibody studies feed into our understanding? Will it feed into that? Uh, it is absolutely the kind of study that we needed to get these answers around antibodies um, and how those uh, are transmissions happening, particularly in children. The study has been running since February and they've just had their first set of results through. Between 3 to 4% of children tested positive for COVID-19 antibodies, showing they have had the virus. The proportion is much higher in London, but fewer than 10% of the children with detectable antibodies had any symptoms. The research will also help to shed light on the role of children in spreading the virus. We know that it seems that unlike illnesses like influenza, which are spread wonderfully by children. They're very good at spreading influenza. Children don't seem to be spreading uh, the COVID-19 virus to anything like the same extent. And that's very different from most respiratory illnesses where it's usually the child that's brought the illness into the household. So there's something different about this. And that provides some reassurance when it comes to opening schools. What we're hoping to do from here on is continue to take blood samples and then we'll be able to track increases in infection rates across different parts of the country and see, for example, if they coincide with reopening of schools and see if that seems to result in an increase in number of infections in children. But could it be that these big antibody studies are underestimating the amount of immunity that children and adults have to this particular coronavirus? I mean, it's reassuring that we're seeing higher antibody levels in London where there's been more disease. So it suggests there is definitely an association or correlation there. But it's possible it is underestimating uh, the, the immunity that's out there. Antibodies are just one part of our immune system and they're measured partly because they're easy to test for in a lab. But our immunity is much more complex. One area of growing interest is something called cellular immunity. And this includes T cells which have a role in killing viruses. These cells might have a memory that help fight off future infections. One team in Sweden is trying to work out what role T-cells play and think we might have more immunity than we realise. Our data is indicating that we, uh, that we can detect uh, T-cell responses in about 30% uh, of individuals of the blood donors that were testing back in May here in Stockholm uh, in comparison to approximately 15% uh, that had uh, antibodies. If that is going to be reflective on a very large population, we don't know that, but at least it indicates uh, that we, we, we might underestimate the, the level of people that have some type of immunity against the virus. We've seen children don't get nearly as sick as adults. Why might that be? A lot of these kids might have been fairly recently exposed to other similar type of coronaviruses than uh, elderly pe uh, people then they might have some type of uh, protective response, maybe. Another theory is the virus interacts differently with the child's cells. 
Well, it's certainly striking as a paediatrician working on the wards, I can say that we've just had no children with classic COVID-19 disease. A lot seems to come down to a receptor called the ACE2 receptor, which the COVID-19 virus uh, binds to, and children express that at lower levels than adults do. And that, so therefore, that's, that it's, potentially it's because the virus doesn't have anything to latch onto in children and can't go on to cause infection and diseases. The team in Oxford are also interested in finding out more about the role of T-cells. And I think that's one direction we might be taking this study, is to actually start to look for those uh, white blood cells uh, providing immunity against coronavirus to see if more children have those. Those tests are trickier to do and, and will only be able to be done on a more limited number of children, but it's an important part of the question. The research being carried out here in the UK and across the world into this virus is crucial. The more we know about how to diagnose, treat and prevent it, the sooner our lives can return to some sort of normal.